If you want to survive a horror movie, it helps to not be stupid. In this video, we'll make you smart by showing you all the dumb things that people did in the 2022 Texas Chainsaw <sighs> Massacre sequel available on Netflix, so you can avoid making the same mistakes. This is... Be Dumb. Get Killed. I'm Griff Robodanger. And I'm Tyracula. And we don't want you to get killed by Leatherface. I'm going to show you a series of idiotic decisions made by characters in the 2022 Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Idiotic decisions that, in most cases, led to someone getting brutally slaughtered by Leatherface. The goal is to keep you safe. So if you ever find yourself in the same predicament as these characters, you won't make the same terrible decisions. Now, I know you would never make these same decisions because you are a very intelligent person who makes good decisions, like choosing to watch this video. But it's always good to be prepared, just in case. At the end of the video, I'll count down the three dumbest decisions in the movie. I'll also give out my coveted Big Dummy Award to the character who made the dumbest decisions in the whole movie. This video contains spoilers, so if you haven't seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre yet, you've been warned. Let's begin. So let's say you and your friends are... The idealistic individuals who want to build a better world. And your idea of building a better world is to buy up a deserted town and convert it into an artistic community that caters to influencers and hipsters. If so... Don't put it in a remote town that's... Seven hours by car? I don't care how good your restaurant is. Nobody's driving seven hours for that shit. If your goal is to set up your peaceful utopia in a place... Without the, the violence and the madness. Don't set up shop in an area best known for a series of brutal chainsaw murders that are still unsolved. The bad stuff kicks off when one of our entrepreneurs, Dante, thinks he owns this orphanage. Except, it turns out later on he doesn't actually own the orphanage. See, this old lady lives there and, and she's the rightful owner. Oops. So with this in mind... What are you doing in our house? Don't break into an old lady's house. You're not supposed to be here. Don't try to kick someone out of their own house. If you're a police officer... Come on, let's go. Don't kick an old lady out of her house without proof she shouldn't be there. A heart attack. Don't stress the lady out to the point she has a heart attack. Especially don't do any of this if she's been taking care of Leatherface and is the only reason he hasn't been killing all these years. So you've scared an old lady so much that she's about to die. The cops are here and so is Leatherface, who's being very nice and not killing anyone because the old lady told him he shouldn't do that. They're all about to rush the lady to the hospital. You're Ruth, the girlfriend of the guy who more or less caused all of this to happen. I'll go with her. Don't go along with them. You're not a doctor. You can't help. None of them want you there. Best case scenario, the lady lives, everyone still hates your guts, and the cops have to drive your ass back to Harlow. Worst case scenario, well... Don't get into a vehicle with Leatherface. Especially when he's pissed off. So Leatherface's mother figure dies in the van on the way to the hospital. If you're riding in the back with him... Don't try to stop Leatherface from saving the old lady's life, even if you know it's a lost cause. You might just cause him to snap your arm in half and use your exposed bone to stab you in the neck. So this cop's dead, and in the process he fired a bullet that shoots the cop who is driving and causes the vehicle to crash somewhere in the middle of nowhere. So if you're Ruth, you're now in a crashed vehicle in the middle of nowhere with a dead cop and another cop who's about to die. Wait, oh, he's dead now too. So you're Ruth in a car with two dead cops. You notice Leatherface is behind the vehicle cutting the old lady's face off? Great, now what? Don't forget the cop has a gun. Don't wait until Leatherface's whereabouts are unknown before you try to slowly escape. You should have just bolted from the car when he was distracted cutting off that lady's face. Even if he sees you leave the car, you're a young person in good shape and he's a bulky man in his late 60s. You should be able to outrun him. Unfortunately, Leatherface is ruthless. And now, so is this movie. 
Back in Harlow, a bunch of potential investors and Catherine the Banker Lady show up in a bus, but Mel learns the old lady died, and she's panicking because she's coming to the realization Dante was an idiot, and they shouldn't have been in the orphanage in the first place. Don't double down on your mistake by invading the lady's home again to try and find proof that you made a mistake. If you've forgotten why this is a bad decision, well, first of all, it's trespassing. Also, Leatherface lives there and he's angry and he doesn't have an old lady telling him not to murder anymore, which Dante learns the hard way. Okay, I know he technically doesn't die until later in the movie, but if I didn't put this here it would have thrown off the pacing of this whole video, so you're just gonna have to live with it. Anyway, if you're Mel and you're hiding under a bed because Leatherface is in the room violently smashing down a wall with a sledgehammer... Don't just stay under the bed when you should be army crawling out of the room while he's distracted and making a bunch of noise. The back of the bed is pretty tall and the door is so close, there's a good chance he won't see you escape since he's on the opposite side of the bed. So this guy Richter, he's the contractor who has a lot of guns. He goes into the house to rescue Mel, I guess? But he's ambushed by Leatherface, which causes Richter to drop his gun. If you're Richter, don't try to have a fist fight with a hammer-wielding man twice your size. If the fight's not going so well, and instead of kicking Leatherface's ass, instead of that, he smashes your leg with his hammer so your leg looks like a fancy capital J? Don't try to charge at Leatherface with a gimpy leg when your only real chance here is to grab your gun and try to shoot his eyes out. This decision means hammer time for Richter. But let's rewind for a second. If you're Mel, who's still under the bed at this point, while Richter is trying to fight off Leatherface and has him preoccupied, don't waste your opportunity to either grab the gun or run. If you're trying to sneak out of the house, but you're afraid the squeaky floorboards will give your position away, don't instead try to escape by climbing over the handrail that makes just as much noise and then doing a loud jump that Leatherface is definitely gonna hear. If you're hiding underneath the floorboards and Leatherface is trying to get you by making this long chainsaw attack. Don't stay in the path of his chainsaw when you could roll to literally either side. While all of this is going on, it starts raining, so banker Catherine and the investors and Mel's sister Lila are all waiting in the bus. Catherine leaves the bus to go find Dante and finds him, stumbling out of the orphanage with his face slashed wide open, and now he's dead. The only people who see him this way were Richter, who went in the house and got killed, and Catherine. So Catherine goes back on the bus. If you just found someone who was probably murdered and you know everyone's in danger... Call the cops! You hear me? Don't forget to call the police! Please open the door. Don't! Don't forget to tell everyone on the bus they're in danger. Don't let Lila leave the bus when you know there's something dangerous out there. Or at least tell her, hey, Dante's dead and his face is ripped apart. She'll probably still leave to try to find her sister, but at least she'll understand the situation she's about to face. So Lila leaves and manages to get Mel out of the orphanage. Mel has the keys to the bus, so they can all escape now. If you were just chased around by a giant murderous chainsaw man who pureed a dude's head with a hammer right in front of you... Don't neglect to tell the people on the bus that they are 100% in danger. Especially the guy driving so he gets you the frick out of there with a sense of urgency. Dude, where are you going? Don't leave the bus now. Unless you're at some sort of Halloween haunted house event. Don't stop and live stream when a giant man with a skin mask and a chainsaw gets on your bus. Try anything and you're canceled, bro. Don't assume Leatherface knows or cares about being canceled. The type of person who leaves the house wearing other people's faces generally isn't too concerned about damaging his public image. Once Leatherface is on your bus and is murdering everyone and you realize the emergency exit won't open... Don't forget glass is breakable. Smash it, punch it, kick it. You might get cut up, but you're gonna get cut up even worse if you don't. If Leatherface is busy chainsawing other people... 
Don't stand around banging on the glass instead of running away. Seriously, the whole front of the bus is wide open now. What the f*** are you doing? Don't wait until Leatherface stops chainsawing people to run away when you've had a wide open escape path for like 20 seconds now. If you're on a bus trying to escape from Leatherface... Don't stop and try to escape from a random window when the wide open front door of the bus is just past this curtain. He's not lying. Watch this part from a few moments earlier when Leatherface gets on the bus. Like, there's the exit, and here she's backing through the curtain. It's a straight shot to outside. Failure to properly exit windows leads to the red screen of death for Catherine. Also, if these windows can slide open with minimal effort, what were these people doing? I think we need to retroactively add... Don't just bang on the windows to escape when you apparently could have just opened them. I think those people are already dead, but I'm doing this for your benefit, not theirs. Sally Hardesty once escaped from Leatherface 50 years ago, but he's haunted her ever since. In these 50 years, she's been waiting for him to re-emerge so she can finally take him down once and for all. Obviously, if you've had 50 years to concoct the perfect Leatherface killing plan, it must be pretty good and not stupid at all, right? Don't endanger these girls' lives by locking them in the car and then using them as bait to get Leatherface if you're just gonna leave them and go looking for Leatherface somewhere else. If you've been waiting 50 years to take down Leatherface... Don't bring a firearm that's designed to work best at close range when your prey is known for easily killing people at close range. If you're lucky enough to find Leatherface seated with his back turned to you... Turn around. Don't prompt him to turn around when you can easily blow his head off and end him for good. Don't let him stand up instead of shooting him. Say my name. Don't try to get the guy that only ever communicates with random noises to say your name instead of shooting him. Don't let him grab his chainsaw instead of shooting him. Don't let him leave the room to go kill the girls you trapped in your car instead of shooting him. If you do finally figure out you should be shooting him... <laughs> don't stop shooting him, you weirdo. Remember me now? Don't stop and have a conversation with Leatherface instead of shooting him. <laughs> don't wait until after he's already escaped before finally firing your next shot. Don't aim for his body when it's protected by a chainsaw and his face and legs are exposed. All these terrible choices get Sally chainsawed in the stomach and tossed in the trash. She technically has one more scene later, but we're moving on to the Mel and Lila section, so I'm just getting it out of the way now. Thankfully, before this all happened, Sally had come to her senses and gave Mel and Lila the keys so they could escape. If the crazy lady is determined to fight Leatherface and she's given you the means to escape, don't wait around to see how the fight goes. Just get the hell out of there. Put your seatbelt on. Don't try to run over Leatherface instead of getting the hell out of there. Don't crash your means of escape into a wall. Hey, Leather don't threaten Leatherface with a gun if you don't know how to use it. Don't run. Don't take advice from a person who says, don't run, if that person is about to die from a chainsaw wound because she didn't run. If you manage to get your hands on Leatherface's chainsaw and you go to attack him with it, don't just graze him on the chin and think, yep, got him, when he's already been shot a half dozen times and survived. If you somehow survived at this point and managed to get back to your vehicle in one piece, don't put the car on slow autopilot to have a nice conversation when you should be stepping on the gas and getting as far away from that place as quickly as possible. Leatherface decided it was time for Mel to head off. Now let's count down the three dumbest moves in this video. Number three. Catherine trying to escape out of the bus window instead of the open door. Number two, Sally not shooting Leatherface in the back of his skull when she had the chance. And number one, Dante and Mel kicking an old lady out of her house and starting a chain of events that leads to over 50 people dying, including Dante and Mel. As for the Big Dummy Award, this was my toughest decision yet. 
On one hand, Catherine was terrible at escaping and withheld important information from the bus passengers that might have saved their lives. Try anything you cancel, bro. Or not. On another hand, Dante and Mel pretty much caused this whole thing by being wrong about who owned the orphanage, and also their whole plan to build an artsy village in Harlow is... How do I put it? Your whole idea is insane. That works. But despite all of this, I'm awarding the Big Dummy Award to... Sally Hardesty. She's waited 50 years to take down Leatherface. She finally gets her chance and has an open shot to blow his frickin' head off. But instead, she wants him to... Say my name. Stop naming Destiny's Child songs and shoot the man! You've had 50 years to think about this! 50 years! Not only did she get herself killed, she more or less got Mel killed, and because she didn't kill Leatherface when she had a chance, she's pretty much responsible for any future Leatherface murders. Anyway, thanks for watching. And if you like this video, I have more episodes of Be Dumb Get Killed and a lot of other horror videos on my channel. So check it out and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on upcoming stuff. Until next time, later Danger Seekers.